I'm pathetic, and this is super liminal. Just yeah, wait for this starting cutscene to finish. It'll be not a moment. Just load in here. Um, are we running the glitchless category? Kind of obvious what it'll be. Just no glitches. Um, timing will start when I walk through this first door in three, two, one, go. Oh, now. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, so Superliminal is quite a unique puzzle game, um, and it kind of centers really around your perspective. Um, so the core mechanic is that any object you pick up will appear to be the same size on your screen, but will scale to um, uh, be as big as it possibly can, or as small as possibly can. And as you can see with there, we dropped it from the roof to have it come closer to us and appear bigger, so we can place it you know, larger on the ground, um, bit wonky there, oh well. Um, we can also abuse this mechanic by dropping things by on closer surfaces above us. Uh, I mean by clicking. There we go. So you can make this cheese nice and big to get a nice ramp up here. A bit slow, but whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all for induction, which is the level we're in right now. Lovely. Um, it's just basically an introduction to the mechanic. Um, it'll get a lot more interesting later on, but sort of just simpler puzzles to get you used to it all. Um, each level has like a name for it that quite closely relates to how it'll go and like what mechanics are with it, because most levels have some unique twist to them. But for here we'll do a quick, hopefully get the strap. Where we can. Resize the sign like that. That's massive, but it works. Um, just to get through that a bit faster. And coming up on the final room here, where we're going to do a little bit of a... Not necessarily a glitch, I wouldn't think. But we're going to unlock the physics of the cheese by walking into it, and that just knocks the wall over way easier. So, that's a induction done. First level. Pretty smooth. Um, and we're going to move into... Optical, yeah, optical. Um, loading screens are a bit long, but it's fine. Um, so, as the name kind of entails, optical kind of centers around optical illusions a lot of the time. Um, still has the core mechanic of scaling, but its own little twist of optical illusions throughout it. Um, starting area is just a bit boring, but it's kind of repeated through each level. Um, so. Starting off here, we're gonna just grab the door, throw that out the way. Um, and not go down this hallway. Instead, go down this hallway, which doesn't look like a hallway, but you know, turns into one. Um, this one isn't as much of an optical illusion, but we can just kind of make a little ramp with this sign here to get out of here nice and quick. Oh, lovely. It's a little bit of a annoying quirk of the game where you can sometimes n lose your jump on slanted My surfaces. Name is Dr. That. I'm just going to quickly, if you don't mind, turn off the, where is it, voice, here we go, I'm just going to turn that down, because Dr. Glenn Pierce is a little bit loud, but here, um, I didn't turn around for that one, but there was a little painting on the wall that, when we're in the right position, turns into the cube for us, um, but here we're going to use this cube a bit, and use it to jump up here, instead of grabbing a different cube that's far out of the way, and here's what I was talking about, little paintings on the walls that you can line up to get objects out of nowhere, effectively. Um, here we're going to use this door just to make a little bit of a quicker ramp up here. Saves like a couple tenths, but you might as well. Um, once again, another <laughs> painting on the wall. It's not... Oh. Lovely. Um, use that wall just to make it a bit bigger, faster. And now I've got a little bit of a walking section, so if I've got any... Donations or plugs to throw in, then now's the time. Absolutely. It's going to give everyone a quick reminder of who we are, because there's a few people that I've seen in chat over the last couple of hours. We are speedruns doing speedrun events to raise money for charity. For this event, we're raising money for Game on Cancer, a charity which funds early cancer researchers who are working all across, sorry, across all areas of cancer research. If you'd like to donate, you can go to donate.ozspeedruns.com or type in exclamation mark donate in the chat. Nice. 
So as you can see, we casually just grabbed the moon out of the sky and grabbed a nice convenient door off of it to finish off the level. But yes, this whole elevator and hallway will be a very recurring theme throughout most of them. Um, as well as this starting area, which is like a little hotel kiosk or whatever. Not really sure what to call it. Uh, but now the level we're in is Cubism, which names like sort of suggests pretty much is all about cubes. Um, each puzzle has a cube as their solution and a different kind of quirk with the cube. This first one's just a nice little normal cube. I'm um, just going to use this to jump up here instead. Do a bit of a harder strat here because it's a little bit faster by doing a couple box jumps. I forgot to explain these as well because they're not necessarily intended mechanics. Uh, basically what you do there is you grab it and jump, grab it, jump, and then place it again once you're at the peak of your jump, um, which just makes it nice and big and you can gain a lot of height with it. It's nice and convenient. Um, here again, some more cubes. These are in a nice and convenient place just to jump our way up here, get a nice ledge grab. Um, a prank with a cube that aren't actually cubes. It's in the cube a lot. Um, here, these are a bit weirder cubes. You kind of drag them along, just kind of extend out from the walls. Um, a bit more dead space, sadly. Um, these cubes, you get a little wall, and we could do a cool jump off that. And then the final cube looks normal, but just getting it explodes. Uh, but that's pretty much all for cubism. It's gonna fall down this little hallway, and then, oh, well not hallway, little hole. Get a nice time jump there, and we're back in this sort of hallway and elevator combo. And that's cubism. Not much going on, but I don't know, cubes are pretty cool. Um, and we'll be moving on to Blackout, which is fourth of, fourth of the nine levels. Um, which doesn't have as many puzzles as the rest of the levels in the game and sort of decides to take a different interpretation of like your perspective and how you mess with it like the rest of the game is. So instead of with puzzles, it kind of tries to warp your perception of what the game's about. So kind of getting already a little bit of an area feeling off this. But um, along with the light flickering that'll turn on in a second, not in the most settling atmosphere in comparison to what we've had before. A um, bit, bit of a walking simulator for a lot of this. That's sort of the price you pay for not having puzzles. But, um, yeah, just, just a bit, bit of walking. <laughs> Again, in it, not sure if I've asked very recently, but yeah, any plugs or donations? Pretty much anywhere in this level is perfect. Yeah, well, we just got $20 in before from Nikasai. He says, wait, this is the glitchless run? This game's already doing my head in. Putting this towards the any percent challenge so I can see just how much wilder the game can get. And I would highly recommend people keep donating towards that because not only will that increase our chances of getting to 20K by the end of tonight, but also we've got 60, sorry, about $670 out of $1,000 on that challenge, $330 left. We've got about 50, 40, 50 minutes to do that, so there's plenty of time to get your donations in. Yes, and I can confirm that any percent is quite the visually entertaining run. But um, here we're just going to go backwards just so we can see the silhouette of everything, just to make it easier to jump up here. And we're going to do the only interesting part of Blackout, Blind Maze, which takes about 15 seconds, stops us from going back up there with a light. Um, I may go quiet for a bit here because I need to focus, but let me just... They are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That should be good. There we are. So that's got us through the maze without any light. It's pretty short, but, you know, still a bit hard. Use uh, count and visual cues there to make it a little bit easier on myself. But that pretty much ends blackout. You got a bit of a walk down here, a bit of blood splatter all over the floor, because, you know, why not? But yeah, I'm going to turn on the generator here to you know, stop this blackout that's happened. And it will also reveal that the blood on the ground, that's loud, oops, is actually red paint. I might actually want to turn down the sound effects because we are going to have a comically loud sound effect soon. And near the, actually not soon, at the end of the game. So I'm going to quickly just, second time editing the um, sound, but that should be good there. There you go. Nice little 
decal on the in inside of the elevator. Have unique one for each level. Spice it up a little. Um, but now we're moving on to clone, which is where sort of the the sort of the individual mechanic of the level starts to get a bit like weirder and not as straightforward. Um, clone, its name is probably the most obvious, where we're to clone levels, uh, levels, sorry, objects that we pick up, um, except this door. It just doesn't clone. I believe it's one of the only objects that doesn't do that at this level. Um, we could just use it to place it on this button there. And now we move on to the proper cloning stuff, um, which will be right around this corner where we clone. It's a time to make ourselves a little stairway, I guess. Sort of a ramp, sort of stairway, both sort of work. Um, we're going to do a bit of a difficult trick here with the alarm clock that's right here. Um, see if I can pull it off. Yeah, there we go. Just a quick ramp that we can make out of the alarm clock. And we like got a smiley faces, okay, sir. Which should disappear here, but I think I can. Preserve it, there we are. Keep the smiley face. Until we drop this apple where now it's gone. Sad. But um while well, we've got nothing, one thing I might point out is the funny thing with that green apple room is that for pretty much every run that's around twenty two to twenty three minutes, that seems to always be the recommended YouTube thumbnail without fail. Like once you get faster it's Oops. Oops again. There we are, okay. But yes. That's a bit of a difficult jump that I screwed up there, sadly, but might as well try and go for it. Because if it works, it saves time. Um, but here we're gonna make another little bit of a ramp with this sign here. Gotta wait for it to fall so it doesn't mess us all up. But um there we are, and that pretty much also sums up clone. Got a bit of walk until the end, so asking a lot here. It does have a bit of dead space if any plugs or donations, then you're free for now. Well, we literally just got a $5 donation in from Firestriker who says, this is interesting. I want to see more. So let's put this towards the any percent run. So that brings up to $675. We're getting nice and close. And maybe as a little bit of another incentive to donate, we have some uh, prizes that we're giving away after the marathon. Uh, if you donate at least $10, you'll be eligible to win one of eight Landfall game bundles comprising of three of their greatest hits, Cluster Truck, Totally Accurate Battle Simulator Nightfall, Plus, Truck is a personal favorite of mine. And if you're in Australia, if you donate $20 or more, you'll also get in the running to win a pair of HyperX Cloud earbuds. If you donate $40 or more, you'll also be in the running to win one of two HyperX Cloud 2 gaming headsets. I've been wearing this for every hosting shift that I've done. This is genuinely one of the most comfortable headsets I've ever worn. That is my absolute personal vouch right there. If you want more information and to check out the T's and C's, etc., just go to prizes.ozspeedruns.com or exclamation mark prizes in the chest. And if you want to donate to enter or just give money to charity in general, exclamation mark donate. Nice. So the level we're in now is Dollhouse, which is quite a notoriously difficult level, but also just difficult to optimize. Because you basically resize the portals you're going through, which means the bigger you make the portal, the smaller you go out of it. And in turn, the slower you go. So trying to optimize this level, you have to be perfect, but it's not going to go for perfect. We do have a couple lineups that we can use, thankfully, including that second resize of the dollhouse there. Lining up a couple of things on the walls, but yes, it's a fan favorite of people in a negative way because it can kill runs as well. Um, but we're gonna, well, I don't know if that's big enough. Okay, we're good, okay. So use that fan just to knock over this tower. Um, once again, using the wall to help us resize fast and using that lamp to make us resize that fast. Um, and this is a normalizing portal, which basically just sets our scale back to one, so we're not suffering from bad resizes for the rest of the game. Oh, level, sorry. But um, here we're gonna early grab this dollhouse and start resizing it and use another lineup we have by lining up the bottom rung of that thing. <laughs> I don't know what you call that. But yeah, bottom rung of that to the bottom of the dollhouse of oh, Bouncy Castle, and it lines up pretty nicely. Make it nice drop there, which is, that is the pool, bouncy castle we just went in. But we can pop back out through the door and in the final room of Dollhouse, which I need to remember I can't turn around early. Um, and this probably has like the most unique solve, or unique solutions from people's first playthroughs. Like, most puzzles people eventually figure out the same way, but I've seen like so many different ways of solving that room. But 
I did the fastest of just dropping it by there and walking through. I'll just pet the cat, because why not? Yes, that dollhouse went pretty smooth. Um, I mean, in terms of dollhouse, pretty well. And now moving on to Labyrinth, which is the second longest, um, and also a bit of a walking simulator. Um, we do actually start it off with a couple cool tricks called audio skips, which with a bit of hard parkour, we can jump over the audio triggers, which I believe this is the only point they appear, if I'm not wrong. But yes, we can jump over those, we skip the first one, we can use this can to skip the second one by dropping it up here, and this one's a lot easier, but I'm, okay good, I didn't screw it up, didn't want to call it easy and mess it up there, but um, now I've got a bit of a wait, but less of a wait than we would if we didn't skip them, and we need to line our mouse up with a specific place on this wall. Because where I'm about to be teleported to is a loop of clicking the same alarm clock, where we're teleported to the same space and mouse placed horizontally, but we need to have certain lineups to put our mouse vertically. So at a certain point we're going to line up with this cooler around the middle of that bump, and that puts us right in the middle there. And now we're going to line up a bit earlier with this fire hydrant and alarm right around there. I've oh, got a nice achievement. Um, and hit that. And now we're going to fall through the door backwards <laughs> and click the alarm clock again. And finally exit the loop of alarm clocks with this painting. Got that nice and clean. And now it's back to walking for quite a while without many puzzles. That is sort of like that at the end of the game, especially for the level coming after this. But this is still a little bit visually interesting. You know, flipping out gravity. Bit of a fallen door down here. And a sidewards room now. But um, yes, if we have any donations or plugs, then yeah, perfect time throughout the rest of this level, because not much goes on. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect, because we've just had another couple of donations roll on through. Nice. We're $50 here from The Arston, who says, uh, oh, Super Little Gang, LFGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGGG
30 second unskippable cutscene which you kind of have to run around in unfortunately. You can skip it but that's a glitch and it's, this is glitchless so we cannot do that. Um, we're gonna start holding W here right through the fade out to try and pre preserve some velocity. And here is where the walking simulator starts because it's going to be about not that much of walking before a trick but then a hell of a lot of walking. Um, although we do have a bit of a time save coming up, which is pretty cool. It's about one or two seconds, but in all honesty, you just need time save here. Um, so basically, that pull before put us at 0.99 scale. So what I can do here with the checkpoint reset is set our scale back to 1, which increases our scale by 0.01 and our speed by 0.04 units a second, which over the run, as I said, saves about Four, uh, sorry, two seconds, and there is going to be a bit of a loud sound effect coming up here for thunder. No idea why it's as loud as it, as loud as it is, but yes, just be prepared because it may be a tad loud. I'd say unnecessarily loud, but yeah. But as I said, a bit of bit more walking through here. Um, walking to the end end of here. Most of white space just serves as narrative purpose because a bit of lore for the game. Currently, we're going through dream therapy from through Somnusculpt, and every different level is effectively a dream within a dream. So by now, we're a dream within 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 a dream. Um, and that's I believe he says it's as far as anyone has ever gone. And yeah, it's mostly just narrative and dialogue rather than any like epic battle scene. Or cool parkour, sadly, but it is what it is. We do get to some puzzles eventually, thankfully, right around the end. I think it's the three final things you do in the level of puzzles. Um, but we're gonna. Oh, am I gonna make that? Yeah, sweet. So we did just grab the room we just came out of as a step, but you know, um, we are gonna get a small. I'm not even sure how much time it saves. Probably a couple frames, but we can click the very edge of this light switch to just take a direct line and that should teleport us right there and into a fake loading screen that we know is a fake loading screen and walk through here and climb up the stairs jump across and we're right about to come into the puzzle I mean it depends on what you count as a puzzle I mean interactive puzzles is what I should be saying because I mean there are definitely some visual things that might be a bit weird but yeah, as far as Actual interactive puzzles, we're coming up on one right now, which is a bit of a chessboard. So we're going to preemptively grab one of these chess pieces and try and scale it up as we go. And basically the puzzle here is that these little platforms only exist once you prove they exist by placing something on them. So here we're going to jump across, place it down, just jump as we go, and here's the final one. And we're into the final room with the final trick, cheese skip which skips grabbing cheese. Pretty self-explanatory. But we're going to drop that box down, jump across a bit, and jump through the door, and hopefully land it. Sweet. So that's pretty much it for the run. Um, just walk in for 40 seconds, fall in for 25, and then the end. So I might as well give my couple thanks out, mostly to the Superliminal speedrunning community for just being very cool and supportive. Um, if you're looking to speedrun this game, then the great place to start is the speedrunning community on Discord. Um, for re really any category you want to start, if that's all collectibles or warpless or whatever, tons of people will be around to help you. I'm going to fall down here just for another couple seconds. Um, and also thank ASM for having me here doing the run and still holding this open as late as it is. So yes, thank you. Just got to wait for a fall. Oh, I didn't even do the big Loud noise. Aww. But um, timing is coming up very soon on a two second level where we click an alarm clock. Missed it, damn it. Time. So, yes, thank you for ASM for having me here, running this game. It's pretty fun. So, yes, thank you. I can hand it off now.